हेलो एवरीवन अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू माय सेल्फ नेहा गुप्ता या मेंट ऑफ अ करंट अफेयर्स दिस वीडियो इज गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द करंट अफेयर्स दैट पर्टेन्स टू योर फेज वन ऑफ रेगुलेटरी बॉडीज एग्जाम्स लाइक आर बी एस एवी एन अब सो लेट्स बिगिन विद द करंट अफेयर्स विद द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन बट बिफोर दैट द इम्पॉर्टेंट इन्फॉर्मेशन फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम व्यूअर्स इज दैट गाइज यू कैन डाउनलोड द पी डी एफ ऑफ दिस सेशन ऑन आवर टेलीग्राम चैनल एंड द लिंक ऑफ द टेलीग्राम चैनल इज इन डिस्क्रिप्शन बिलो so on that note let's begin with our first question where is india's first pod hotel located so we have surat ahmedabad mumbai kolkata bangalore in the options out of which mumbai is the right answer so mumbai central railways has launched or we can say established this pod hotel now what is a pod hotel so let me just give you a glimpse of the pod hotel so it's look it looks like this okay so there are different pods uh, approximately uh, 48 pods are there wherein uh, the pods for differently abled people for specially abled people are also uh, made for ladies only pods are also there so these are very minute and basic information that i am giving you you don't have to memorize all of it but yes central mumbai central railway station has developed this first pod hotel this is something that is of importance from your exam point of view this is just for the resting of the commuter so that's a kind of resting place okay which state has approved the mukhya mantri udyam kranti yojana so madhya pradesh jharkhand chatisgarh west bengal uttar pradesh are in the options out of which west uh, sorry ye madhya pradesh is the right answer so basically in this scheme the self employment opportunities would be provided to the people who have passed their secondary education basically who have passed their 12th class so passing 12th class is the eligibility criteria and the age group is 18 to 40 so basically under this scheme loans will be provided to the youth who belong to the age group of 18 to 40 for starting their own business enterprise and that loan would vary for small retailers would vary for industrial industrialist basically the people who want to open up a plant open up an industry okay now the details of the amounts because as i said that amount vary for the retailers as well as for the industry so you don't have to memorize the amounts particularly of the state schemes okay so state schemes do not hold that much importance in your regulatory examination examinations therefore we can very well skip such kind of details next question is which of the following places has received approval from the ministry of home affairs to set up a rajya sainik board for the welfare of the ex service man ladakh goa andaman nicobar lakshadweep puducherry are in the options out of which ladakh is the right answer guys last year in 2020 jammu and kashmir rajya sainik board rules came out under which how the rajya sainik board of jammu and kashmir would function that was mentioned now the ministry of home affairs has approved to set up the rajya sainik board for the union territory of ladakh now what is the board what is the function of this board that i will tell you for sure but first let's understand the background of this so prior to 2019 prior to jnk reorganization act the rajya sainik board was one for both okay jammu and kashmir and ladakh because ladakh was not at all a separate entity now since the reorganization has taken place and both of them have got their individual identities as union territories therefore ladakh and jammu and kashmir have got this rajya sainik board now the very first and the most important fact about these boards that you should memorize is that these boards work under the administration of ministry of defense although the setting up of this board in ladakh has been approved by ministry of home affairs but do not confuse that these boards work under ministry of home affairs no these boards work under ministry of defense now let's come to the function performed by these boards so basically rajya sainik boards so sainik se hi samajh mein aata hai that these are for the armed forces now these 
boards basically work as a link between the state administration state or union administration as the case may be and the central government now these boards are tasked to implement the welfare schemes for the ex servicemen for the people for the kins of the servicemen who have uh, lost their lives during the wars so basically they undertake the welfare work for the servicemen and their families that is the whole purpose of these rajya sanik boards they implement the welfare schemes of the defense um, welfare schemes of the government for the defense person that is the whole function okay now apart from the function that i have told you they are also the apex body under which the zila sanik welfare offices work okay so in this rajya sanik board of ladakh the zila sanik welfare offices of le and kargil will function so they will would be subsumed under this rajya sanik board apart from this there is nothing much that you need to memorize it is very basic and by mere understanding of the basic function of this rajya sanik board you will also grasp your uh, the information about this board that why do we need to create such a board for ladakh and for jammu and kashmir okay so that was all about this news next question is which of the following exercise has been recently conducted by indian army and air force to assess the resilience of their logistic supply chain so this exercise guys is very important because we are going to face another winter in ladakh where we already had the galwan valley clash and still the clashes emerged there so in the wake of that tensed situation this exercise holds a greater significance therefore do pay attention uh, to this exercise and you can expect a question on this ex exercise in your upcoming examinations if the exam is held near february march okay that i said because you also know that only 6 months are relevant but don't be in a misjudgment misconception that only 6 months current affairs would suffice because because there have been instances where rbi has tended to uh, de deviate from the syllabus and rbi has asked questions one year ago also in your current affairs only however you don't have to deviate from your path you just have to stick to the six month syllabus but yes since the exam has not been announced yet therefore you can keep your eyes open your mind open for different kinds of uh, current affairs that are going on okay different kinds of news that are there and particularly pay attention to the news that i point out me or any other mentor you are following for that matter so the mentor whoever you are following the mentor who points out that guys this is important do pay attention to this then obviously it is your responsibility to pay attention to that and memorize that okay now as far as this exercise is concerned so the right answer is operation hercules now this exercise as the question itself is clarifying that it has been held between the indian army and the indian air force the basic purpose was to check the resilience of the logistic supply chain so that if any war breaks out in winters in ladakh or any uh, other area of the lac then indian air force and army would be able to coordinate between themselves so that is the basic purpose next question is recently trade promotion council of india has signed an mou with the department of economy and business development of the government of navara navra which is an autonomous region of dash spain austria denmark norway and sweden so basically recently tpci has signed an mou with the government of this region navra which is basically an autonomous region of spain now where is it located it is located in the northern part of spain as you can see here from this location ta uh, target that this is the autonomous region okay now what is the purpose of this mou the purpose is to strengthen the ta trade ties okay now the beneficial party here 
the party who is going to benefit from this MOU. Obviously, it is going to benefit both India and this region of Spain. But here, from this region, Navra's point of view, India is a very crucial market to explore. Okay, so here the first beneficial party is this region. So that's a proud moment for us because usually whenever India enters in any kind of MOU or any kind of agreement, India is the one which is the seeker. But here, the, it's the reverse. So that's the one thing regarding this MOU. Moving on to the next question. Which of the following countries has been included in the Indian Ocean Rim Association as its new dialogue partner? So recently 21st edition or we can say 21st meeting of this IORA was held and at that meeting Russia was welcomed as the newest dialogue partner of this organization. Now let's have a look at the meeting in detail. So first of all, it is the 21st edition of the annual Council of Ministers meeting of the Indian Ocean Rim Association. Now remember, Bangladesh is the current chair of IORA for two years till 2023. Now during this meeting, Russia was welcomed as the new dialogue partner and this person Salman Al-Farisi has been selected as the new Secretary General of IORA. Now do remember, he has been recently appointed. Therefore, you can expect a question on the Secretary General of this organization. Now, the next point is, can you guys tell me which country is the newest member of this organization in the comment section below? Do mention it. Uh, do mention your answers. What is India's score in the trace uh, bribery risk? metrics so guys basically it's not the score it's the rank okay so which is what is india's rank india's rank is 82 so trace international is the organization which releases this trace bribery risk metrics that uh, that basically traces the risk assesses the bribery risk of countries so a total of 194 jurisdictions almost all the political states that are there in the world have been covered by this uh, report denmark tops so we can say it's the it is the country with least bribery risk north korea is at the bottom so north korea is the we can say is the hot spot for corruption India's rank is 82nd. Okay, not a very good, not a very bad ranking. It's the average ranking that India has achieved. However, it is very good in comparison to our peers like China. So China is much, uh, much below than us in the ranking. Now, when it comes to parameters, there are four parameters. Opportunity of business interactions with the government, anti bribery, deterrence and enforcement, government and civil services transparency capacity for civil society oversight including the role of media okay now these are divided into nine sub domains okay so you just need to know that these are divided into nine different sub domains now here we have the ranking of india as well as the top rankers on the basis of parameters it's basically the score of India, not the ranking. So do pay attention to this thing that the ranking was given overall. However, scores on each and every parameter was given separately, not ranking. Again, I'm repeating myself. Okay. So as far as the opportunity is concerned, Denmark again has topped. If you see this list, four, three out of four parameters have been topped by Denmark. Only Sweden has topped in this transparency value parameter. So this makes it easier for you to memorize it now. Next is deterrence and enforcement. Again, De Denmark. Civil so society oversight, Denmark. Transparency, I have already told you, Sweden. Now, India has the least score in this government and civil service transparency. We can relate it better if you take the example of PM Cares Fund. The highest score has been given to this anti bribery deterrence and enforcement now the opportunity of business interaction with the government and the 
civil society oversight both are on the, uh, are basically have got the average score 47 and 43 so ye least or most wala zarur dhyan rakhna okay next question is who has been appointed as the brand ambassador of trifed adi mohotsav 2021 sachin tendulkar mary com saina nehwal neeraj chopra pv sindhu out of these mary com is the right answer so adi mohotsav is the national tribal festival that is organized by ministry of tribal affairs and trifed and this was inaugurated at delhi heart in new delhi moving on to the next question so here we have the options out of which you have to choose the correct option as you can see on the one side you have been given the years then you have the uh, events of icc and then the host countries so out of these many options let me clarify the right answer is option e okay so guys this is the uh basically the entire chart of the events that icc is going to host now the one which are in bold are the most important because these events are going to be hosted by india completely or partially okay so here you can see india and sri lanka are going to host this uh, men's t20 world cup in 2026 collaboratively then men's champions top trophy in 2029 will be hosted by india completely uh, solely then we have india and bangladesh organizing or co-hosting the men's 50 over world cup in 2031 now apart from the bold ones the ones which are not bold or the uh, host countries of different events are also important because you should be aware of this fact that sports particularly cricket has assumed a greater importance in your examination so don't skip this guys okay so this is the chart which you uh, can memorize by revising it one or two times continue uh, continuously and the cricket lovers would find it very easy to memorize it okay so i was giving that hint for the non cricket lovers so guys here this session ends i hope that you have found this session meaningful and if you have really found it meaningful then do subscribe our channel and hit the bell notification thank you so much